Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're enjoying the videos, please consider subscribing. So in today's video, we're going to go over a somewhat controversial topic, but not really. Um, I'm going to go over how I package my uh, frozen pinkies. Now that being said, we're going to start from when they're alive, freeze them, and then package them. So keep in mind I am following um, guidelines that have been published. I don't remember the exact accreditation, but it's basically the, uh, the animal publications um, for frozen rodents. And any pinkies, pinky rats, under seven days of age, you don't have to gas. Um, and you just strictly throw them into the freezer. Now, um, obviously we're not going to do any crazy time lapses showing them freezing. That would just be cruel. Um, instead, we're just, I've already got some that are frozen and I've got some that I need to put in the freezer and we'll jump cut between the two. If this bothers you, I do apologize, but it is part of the industry. And it is a fact that it has to be uh, faced. All right, let's get on with the video. With choosing to call pinkies, you have to decide how you're going to about get doing this because pinkies are what you ultimately grow into weaned and small and medium and large. So if you just call all of your pinkies, you will not have anything larger to sell. So with that, what I've been doing and now that the rack that we built recently is starting to produce uh, pinkies is I'll show you what I do. Now with this rack, I have three females and they're in the tub and you can see back here in the back that there are babies. They've rearranged the bedding, that's on them. They can do with it how they want. But um, these three females produce 30, two babies so they're all roughly on average of 10 per litter which means that i have chosen to pull one third of their babies so i pulled 10 pinkies from their tub that leaves 20 pinkies to grow into adults and i have three racks that are producing roughly that that same amount on average so that means i have 60 babies that are going to grow into you know weaned pups smalls mediums larges and i have 30 pinkies that i'm calling to freeze and add to my um to my back stock because i need uh babies for feeding my baby bull snakes that'll be coming this coming season so with that, let's move over to the table and to how I actually prepared the pinkies to be frozen. Here we are at the table. I have two trays ready to go into the freezer. And I personally can't stand when I open a bag of pinkies that all of the pinkies are so crammed together that they are stuck together. So the way I've been doing this is I leave these pinkies individual. I freeze them as is so that way they are individually um, separate and not frozen together into clumps and then from there I actually will put them into a larger bag in preparation to vacuum seal. So let's get these guys in the freezer and I'll pull out the bag of frozen pinkies and we'll uh, get ready to vacuum seal um, them into groups. It's the next day, um, all of the pinkies in question have been frozen. Now. I have a bag that I've been working on. I don't produce a ton, um, obviously, because I've only got pinkies being produced every three weeks. But I have a slow count, and I have close to 100 here. So what I'm going to do from here, and what I typically do once I have a small bulk, is I actually take and I vacuum seal the pinkies. Now, again, I'm actually following uh, guidelines from PIJAC.org, which is uh, Pet Industry Joint Advisory Council, and they actually um, 
they reference the American Veterinary Society and suggest using CO2 on anything over the age of seven days. And again, these were less than seven days old when they were frozen. So now, uh, I'm going to put these in groups of 20 and then vacuum seal them. Uh, the reason for 20 is I typically sell my frozen pinkies for a dollar a piece. Um, bag of 20, $20, easy change. It just, it's easy. It's easy, um, easy math. It makes everybody's life easy. But I never vacuum seal all that I have. And the main reason for vacuum sealing them is actually freshness for my animals months from now once babies are born. Um, and that's where I go with this. So let's go ahead and get these guys counted up. We'll get them vacuum sealed and get them back in the freezer. All right, let's get to work. That probably leaves another 20 in the bag and that's okay. Just in case I have anyone that needs any, that only needs one or two, I'll have them available. But these four are going to be for my use and there's 20 per bag. So let's get these vacuum sealed and back in the freezer. And being vacuum sealed, these will last pretty much indefinitely. I could probably use a slightly smaller bag, but smaller bags tend to not work as quite as well, so I just use a larger bag. Also, if you ever wonder why when you buy pinkies, there's a bunch of tails and legs in the bottom of the bag when you're done, pinkies are very fragile once they uh, are frozen. So the legs and tails will just break off because there's no actual connective tissue. It's just cartilage or just, and that's it. So they tend to just fall off. And the last one, I hope this helps everyone as far as how they, how to do, um, how to freeze pinkies. Now, um, side note, 
vacuum sealing, it's an added expense to to doing mice and keeping mice and rodents in general. I really like it. I don't necessarily endorse a particular brand or brand of bags or anything like that, but it all of your large manufacturers vacuum seal and they vacuum seal for a reason and it's because it helps to keep the rodents for a longer almost indefinite period of time and when you have larger animals it actually creates a nicer packaging as well um, that's why you see a lot of people like Big Cheese Rodent Factory using foam plates that they then slip into the bags with the rodents laid out nicely so that way you it's easy for you to pull uh, rodents out one or two at a time. Um, from a business standpoint it definitely makes a difference. Um, larger rats being packaged individually it really helps as well um, because most people that buy a jumbo or colossal or any other large version of a rodent they typically only buy one a month or two a month and they only need to buy one or two at a time and having them individually packaged um, it really saves them a lot of effort all right let's get this last one done and everyone have a great day Thanks for watching the video. If you like what we've done, please remember to subscribe. And also, consider checking out either the playlist or the video that is shown on the screen. Have a great day. Bye.